Thank you so much, Nevin, for joining me today. My pleasure. Did you get a chance to set up your water system before you started planting? There, there's, a, there's a lot of parts to the water system. Uh, we put in about 18, 19,000 litres worth of water, rainwater tanks. And so part of that is making sure that you have um, efficient means of delivering that for the annuals are oyers and for the um, per perennials are deep pipe waterers. And they both work remarkably well, but also part of it is dealing with your wastewater. So basically anything that, you know, shower, bath, any of that sort of stuff goes into the banana circle, which means the banana circle has gone berserk. Um, it's at the back of the house. So not only has it provided bananas, it's provided shade on the back of the house. Uh, I set up a little valve. So when we do the washing, um, all of that wash water is diverted into the constructed wetland and is then used to water trees. What I did was put together a tube that sat on top of the deep pipe waterer so that when I'm, you know, you're peeling the veggies and you're doing the water and the, the water goes into a bucket, you pour that bucket in and it goes straight down into the ground. I can do it any time of the day because that water is going straight underground. There's no, no losses, no evaporation at all. This is stuff that without my exposure to permaculture, I wouldn't have had a clue about. It's staying hotter for longer and the, the seasons are changing. And what I found was I had a lot of difficulty growing the veg that I was used to growing. Um, and so to get around that, I covered most of the veggie growing area. There are some things that don't grow well under 50% shade cloth, but most does. Um, I am very, very stubborn and sometimes stuff doesn't work. Citrus works great, apples don't. But there's a lot of stuff. If you want to start talking um, a sweet potato and things like that, that grows really, really well. So. You know, part of that is creating the microclimate. Part of that is finding the stuff that you like to eat that actually grows. Years ago, I was keen to try some climbing beans. Um, I'm not a huge fan of beans, but the family likes them and I eat them because I grow them. And um, I grew them up the side of the tanks and it worked really, really well. And I tried to feed them to the kids and they went, no, nah, not eating that, don't like them. And so I went back to growing the, the shorter beans dwarf beans and we've been growing that way ever since so it doesn't matter what grows well at your place you don't eat it you know there's not a lot of point so it's a case of finding within those parameters what what do you like to eat and what grows well and 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 getting them together very good i keep um trying to disguise the foods that people don't like <laughs> If you grow your own chocos, you can harvest them when they're an inch long. And then they're amazing in a stir fry. Yeah. You know, they're crunchy and nutty. And the other thing is the stir fry of the, um, the choco tendrils. We could produce enough food to feed ourselves comparatively easily if we were prepared to, um, to put up with a restricted diet. Um, in terms of veggie patches, we have 14 veggie patches. And of course, once I learned about chook tractors... I mean, amazing piece of machinery. They do the digging, they do the fertilizing. You get eggs, um, you get chooks, because chooks are fun. We grow our own seedlings, so plant into a seedling punnet and then into newspaper pots and then into the ground. And that happens all year round. So that it didn't matter what time of year you came to see us here, um, we would have something growing. We would have something that's going off, we'd have something that's coming up. We'd have the chooks on one part and areas that are ready for the chooks. Yeah. I've got to tell you, we don't eat our chooks. Uh, we have a, a retirement village, which is a shed, which I keep filled with straw. And the chooks in there dig that over and turn that into mulch for us. I've been using this process for uh, 16 years. And in that time, okay, a bit of rock dust, um, um, of comfrey, a bit of liquid manure, and a bit of composty compost. Um, but for the most part, our fertility has been maintained by the chooks. Mm. 